Welcome everyone. Today we're going to be talking about hemp fusion. More specifically, we are talking about all things revenue, sales, and distribution. In order to do so, we have John Visser. You are the chief revenue officer, my good man. Welcome. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. Well, well, hey, just before we start jumping into some of these questions and talking about the company and distribution, you know, what you're hard at work at, if you don't mind, for someone who may not have, um, you know, they may not have heard you or your background before, can you give us a little bit of a background about uh, what you've been doing before coming to Hemp Fusion and what your role is with the company as well? Sure, sure. Um, so again, thanks for having me today. Um, this is not my first foray into an emerging channel. So I've been a little over 25 years in the consumer products goods space. Started in the 90s with bottled water. So uh, crazy to think that that was once an emerging category, um, but worked for Nestle Waters at the time. Um, went on to primarily uh, nutrition. So if you kind of follow my background, it's been mostly in better for you products. I uh, joined a company, EAS, uh, which was a sports nutrition company in the early uh, 2000s, um, eventually uh, sold to Abbott. So Abbott Nutrition, a division of Abbott Laboratories, uh, combined, spent about a decade um, with EAS and Abbott, uh, running mostly the what, what they considered emerging channels. So, and again, back then, uh, e-commerce was an emerging channel. So, you know, was was early on listing um, stuff on Amazon products. Uh, was uh, very early with subscribe and save, and so um, continued on with Premier Nutrition, which sold to Post Holdings and um, another sports nutrition company and uh, prior was Navajo Incorporated, which is a large focus on general merchandise and um, health and beauty items. So um, currently, um, as you mentioned, I'm the chief revenue officer with Him Fusion Wellness Inc. And uh, my goal is very clear, and it is to develop an execute strategy for the commercialization of our brands um, and our targeted retailers, our targeted channels of trade, our markets and uh, both domestic domestically and globally. Yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate that. It was a very detailed and, and very and very uh, quick succession. So I appreciate that very much. I think people have an understanding now of the pedigree that you've had throughout your career and now what you're doing with this company as well, uh, which jumps uh, allows us to jump right into the questions because recently you had a news release come out that Hemp Fusion, uh, your OTC topical products were number one in both units sold and the dollar amount sold for a major food and drug mass retailer, FDM. Uh, can you explain a little bit, you know, what does this mean for your company to be able to achieve that? But also for some investors who may not understand why, can you explain why that company may want to stay anonymous at this point or is asked to stay anonymous at this point? Yeah, no, no, great, great, great question. So it's very exciting. Um, you know, I think our performance demonstrates that our overall strategy of having the right products validated by regulatory compliance in the right location at the right price point that strategy is working. Um, you know, it really validates the overall brand. And um, I would say coming in second or third is okay, <laughs> right? But achieving the number one position, the overall category performance is always the goal. And we're very proud of this accomplishment. Um, so further to that, um, you know, uh, we, we view our retailers as very collaborative relationships. And it's gonna be very key to our growth in the brick and mortar space. So we're very confident in our ability to assist our retail partners in growing their overall CBD categories within their store. Honored to have the opportunity uh, to serve as kind of category advisors or potentially category captains when designated. And um, again, our re relationship with these retailers are partnerships. And these retailers are very large organizations with very precise communication directives. And um, so we don't ever disclose performance of a specific retailer. Um, these retailers will disclose kind of the performance um, in the public arena as they see fit. Yeah, absolutely. And then I will say the, the last thing is the, sorry, to cut you off, the yeah. advantage of, of, of access to syndicated data, such as Nielsen Q does give us um, the ability to look into the category and have a, a scoreboard, right? And uh, I, will, I will tell you, Brandon, we'd like to win. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure investors love hearing that as well. And I appreciate that under, uh, that explanation because some investors were curious, you know, if it was that good, why can't you say it? There, there's good reasons behind that, of right. course. Um, 
next I'd like to speak about, we, we talked about, you know, these retailers, we talked about these partnerships, we talked about growth. And one thing that investors are very curious about are how are things going on the international uh, standpoint? You know, we, we were talking about expansion uh, into the EU through Ireland. We, uh, you, we spoke with Danny Brody and Jason, both talking about that Trojan horse uh, of using Problem to really get into these markets and whatever have you. Uh, where is that going right now? How are those efforts going? If you don't mind just taking a little bit moment uh, to focus on that for investors as well. Sure, sure. Um, so globally, uh, we really feel there's great potential for both brands. And that's very similar to the U.S. market. So it's both brick and mortar and also from an e-commerce perspective. Um, Probulum Probiotics, and not that everyone knows, but has been an established brand internationally uh, for the past years, specifically in the UAE. Um, we continue to um, you know, look at the CBD category. You know, it's going to open up and expand in different international markets at different times, given the regulatory hurdles by each country or region, right? Um, and probing them really gives us the ability to identify opportunities and begin to establish working relationships with key retailers and distributors in countries that may not be ready for CBD products at this time. In setting up the potential infrastructure uh, for success by country in advance, we should have a quicker path to market for CBD when each kind of company opens up from a regulatory perspective. Um, we're also working on some strategic regulatory compliance elements that are oftentimes country specific or region specific. Um, so we did um, announce recently through a news release that we submitted our novel foods dossier to the, to the UK regulatory food safety agency. And we're happy to confirm that we're in country with our distribution partner with Probulent we're working to gain uh, retail distribution and our hemp fusion products will be arriving soon. Um, last thing is we're actively engaged in expanding our global footprint. And we've uh, we've recently announced, um, you know, targets being including EU, UK, Mexico, South America, China, India, South Korea, just to name a few. Yeah, and fascinating. And I'm really looking forward to seeing that uh, because obviously as you continue to expand, you continue to get your brand out there. And, and sticking with that theme of expansion, uh, it's not just about expanding into new retailers. It's not just about expanding into new regions and new countries, but also with the product line as well. And I know you got to be very careful with this, but I wanted to be able to ask uh, for investors and consumers when it comes to expanding your product lines, maybe uh, looking into cosmetics, looking into pet foods in these different areas, Whereabouts or what can you speak on those elements uh, in terms of different products that you'd be looking to be creating in the very near future? Sure, sure. And again, without getting uh, too specific, right, uh, we have an incredible R&D pipeline. And um, really one of our competitive advantages is our exclusive USDA organic um, certified broad spectrum hemp extract, which is exclusive to us. Uh, gives us a tremendous platform for, for product expansion. Um, just if I was going to highlight a few topics, um, given the success of our topicals, we're going to continue to look at, you know, potential potential expansion of categories and some category adjacencies with new products uh, where it makes sense. Um, we have an imminent, imminent launch of our gummies um, into that category of ingestible CBD products. And uh, we might be a bit biased, but they taste delicious. Um, and then uh, we, the, the pet category is poised for growth. That's that's no secret. Uh, we just believe that it should be approached in the correct manner um, with specifically formulated products for, for pets, um, following regulatory compliance and guidelines within that category. Um, we're pet lovers here at Hemp Fusion Wellness Inc. Um, I have two dogs in my office right now. And um, the, we, we, but we do feel that that'll be an entrant that, that we'll look at in the very near future. And look, we'll continue to identify uh, uh, things as they, uh, as they expand. Um, right now, we're going to keep pace with, uh, with what we know is the current uh, regulatory guidelines. Absolutely. And, and well said as well. Well, we've, we've spoken about expansion. We've spoken about uh, product lines. We spoke about these different elements. One element I would like to speak on really quickly, especially for those who still mean, you know, they're, they're still learning your story. You've got five specific sales channels. Do you mind going over those very quickly? And, and is there one or two that you're finding uh, there's a lot of growth that's going to be happening within 2021 that you'd like to speak on? Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, so we have a, a five pillars to our channel strategy for sales. Um, so natural specialty, food, drug, mass club convenience, which we kind of lump into a group, but I'll get into in a minute. Um, E-commerce direct to consumer, um, our global 
um, strategy. And then um, we also have a doctor prax practitioner channel focus. And so just to kind of give a little background of our company, the natural specialty channel is our legacy. That is where the company started. And we have some great, very deep retail relationships that we're going to continue to leverage and expand upon. Um, these are great operators uh, in this channel. And uh, some of them would have, which have recently announced uh, food drug mass expansion um, footprints this, this year, um, also um, brick and mortar expansion footprints. So uh, we're excited about the opportunities in natural. And again, that's kind of the base of our business and uh, gives us a nice, a nice platform to expand. Um, with that, I think we've just highlighted um, our, our global thoughts and uh, kind of what our strategy is for global expansion. Um, the Food Drug Mass Club convenience channel, and that's a lot to say at once, um, just really represents an incredible growth opportunity. And so each one of those is, is uh, each really its own channel. So the food channel being U.S. Grocery, then Kroger, Albertsons, the super regionals like a Publix and HEB, a Meyer, a Wegmans, right? Uh, drug being Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid. Club, Walmart, Target, right? Mass, Costco, Sam's Club, BJ's. And then this little thing called Convenience, which has a, over 150,000 outlets in the, in the United States. So um, from, a, from an overall number of doors perspective, great opportunities for growth in each one of those channels that kind of makes up a channel. And then um, as we look at um, our e-com direct to consumer uh, focus, that just really exploded in the CBD category uh, during, during COVID in 2020. And so we, we entered 21, 2021 very strategically with an expanded effort already into these channels and we're, we're seeing some early success there. And then um, the, the last channel that we kind of touched on uh, was really our doctor practitioner channel. And so this would be a unique opportunity to serve the patient community through doctor recommendation of our products. And we have products specifically branded for this channel. So we have a product biome research, which is our doctor practitioner version of Probulin. And we have a product HFF labs, which would be our doctor practitioner uh, brand for uh, him, him fusion. Um, we've witnessed a significant shift to telemedicine um, as a result of COVID and continue to pivot in this channel with expanded partnerships with distributors and also direct patient ordering access through our web, our web portals. And then in regard to the fastest growing, I mean, like it's no secret, our goal is to grow all these channels um, uh, in 2021 and beyond. I would say that if you looked at the overall absolute number of opportunity, food, drug, mass club, convenience, or FDMCC just has the, the largest number of brick and mortar refill locations. Absolutely. Well, well, John, I, I appreciate so much for your time going over all these different questions and giving a lot of information to investors who are, are both currently investing with you and always looking to continue to keep up to speed and learn more, but also the new ones who come in and go, you know, I've, I've never heard of this company and be able to see people like yourself at the helm. I think that gives a lot of confidence to these uh, individuals, especially, you know, talking about all the things you have in the go. It's very, very exciting. I look forward to continuing to see all the progresses that your team has been uh, accomplishing and everything that's going to be happening throughout 2021. So once again, I just want to thank you very much for your time and coming on today. Thank you very much, Brandon.